curl is a pretty important utility, and I'm going to talk practically through the different ways that I've used it in the past. Starting with, you can run curl with curl and a URL. Curl actually stands for client URL. Now you know. In this case, we're going to run the URL with a protocol, and that is HTTPS, and the URL is going to be my website, navic.org. We don't have to run the protocol. We are right now for reasons that will become apparent in a second. But when you run curl, you're just going to get the content from the site that you hit. In this case, just HTML. Now, a lot of times you may just want the header information. You can do that with dash capital I, and that's just going to return the header information. You can also get the content and the header with dash lowercase I, but I use that a lot less. Usually I'm getting the content or the actual individual header. Speaking of getting the content, uh, sometimes you want to output that content to a file. Now, of course, you can use standard out, but curl actually has this built in with the dash O command, and you can specify a file. In this case, we're going to say, let's just say navic.html. And when we run curl, it's not going to give that content to the screen, but in this case, it's going to print it to navic.html, which we can see if we give vim out navic.html. And here is the content that we would normally see to the screen. Now, there's another way you can specify the output, and that is with the dash capital O command. And with the dash capital O, is it's actually going to use the path information specified in the URL. In this case, we don't have a path, and it's just the root. But I can tell you from knowing the site, the root is actually just serving index.html. So in this case, when we use dash capital O, we don't have to specify a file name because it's going to take the file name from the path, in this case, index.html. If we run this and we vim out index.html, again, this is just the content that we now got to a file. Moving on, and we're already going to talk about why we're specifying with HTTPS when I said earlier we didn't actually have to specify a protocol. And we can see that by clearing the screen and curling just my website with navic.html. I can't talk and type. And as you can see, we get redirecting to the screen. Let's just get header information with capital I, and we can see here that there's a permanent redirect from navic.org to HTTPS navic.org. Now, curl defaults to using HTTP in this case, but it doesn't follow the redirect that I have set up for my website to HTTPS. We can have curl actually follow that redirect with the capital L flag, and this is going to then print, and I still have I on here, so it's only showing us header information, but in this case, it's going to show us that HTTP header for the redirect, but then it's going to follow the redirect to HTTPS, in this case, returns an HTTP 200. Now, Curl actually shows us a lot more default information besides just the content and the headers. And we can see a lot of that with the dash V command, lowercase V, and this is verbose. And this is actually going to show us all the individual different things curl does to establish a connection. In this case, it's following the redirect because we still have L on. Uh, it's showing us a protocol negotiation for TLS. It's showing us the, the cert files. It's showing us the full TLS handshake here and all the things it does to establish that connection that ends with that 200 status code. This is super helpful because you know sometimes we'll, things will fail in the TLS handshake, for example. And with the verbose command, you can see that where that actually failed. Speaking of the TLS handshake, a very common thing that's going to happen is going to be using curl, let's say, against something that you're building or an internal tool that may not have the certificates correctly set up, or they may be self-signed, uh, and curl doesn't really like that very much. We actually have a website that I'm going to pull up on the screen right now that I actually really like to test some of this called badssl.com. It's super great. It's a lot of different examples of the ways that SSL can break. For example, if we look at this untrusted route, it shows us that your connection is not private, so we can test against this. And when you see an alert like this in your browser, normally you can just go to advanced and proceed to untrusted route, right? And in this case, it's just going to show us a nice big red banner. But if we actually curl one of these sites with a bad SSL, so I'm just going to do curl. I'm going to copy this into the screen. We're going to curl self-signed bad SSL.com. Basically, this is a URL that has a self-signed SSL cert. If we run curl against that, we're going to get an error basically saying SSL certificate problem, self-signed cert certificate, right? So we can't actually receive the content from the screen. Now, this is very similar to the error we just saw on the browser where that Chrome popped up for us, but we can still advance through and proceed unsafely. And you can do that with curl with the dash lowercase k command. And here you see the content's going to be presented to the screen. This is super helpful. You'll run into this quite a bit, especially when you're troubleshooting SSL. You know, if you're using curl to see if a site is up or not, sometimes you want to see what content is behind the certificate issue. The dash k is super helpful here. It 
comes up more than you would think that you're dealing with things with self-signed or bad certs in the wild. Okay, that's the basics of using curl to interact with, you know, basic URLs, but curl is also super popular for interacting with things like APIs. Now, pulling up another link here, we're going to be we're going to be looking at an API from this dummy API example site. And as you can see here, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. There's a few different individual APIs this dummy API gives us. So let's use curl to interact with some of these APIs. Starting with the way that we would use curl against the site, we're going to curl against the employees path of this dummy API. And this is going to return JSON of the individual employees that are in this API. So this is still just doing a basic get request. In this case, it's returning JSON instead of HTML. We're going to clear the screen and we can also use the employee and specify a number. And again, this is just going to get JSON about that individual employee. Let's say I want to get information about multiple employees. I can actually add the next URL after this one. So I'm going to copy this employee number one URL. I'm going to add it right after that employee number one, and I'm going to come to the end of that file. We're going to change that one to a two. So in this case, curl is going to run against employee number one, and then separately employee number two. And as you can see, curl will return both results. Now, let's say I wanted to look at five employees, right? I could stack five full URLs next to each other, and curl will return all the results. But curl actually can glob URLs for us with some basic regex that you can look at more than what I'm going to present today. But um, in this case, if we go back to that first curl where we just have employee number one, and instead of using employee number one or listing out all the different URLs we want to hit, we can use a range of employees we want to search for in the square brackets here. Curl is going to interpret this and check each URL one through five. If we hit enter here, as you can see, it shows us the output of each one through five curl get request that is sending this API and getting returned the JSON. Now, of course, APIs are just more than getting information. You can also send post requests with curl. Let's do that. So we can interact with this dummy API's create endpoint. And I'm actually going to paste again to the screen just so I don't have to type all this out for you. But here we're specifying the dash D flag. And this dash D flag is saying data, basically the data that we want to submit with a post request to the endpoint that we're specifying. In this case, the, the API create endpoint. Now, this is expecting uh, URL form data, that's the default. And when you don't specify a different method, as we'll talk about in a bit, the default here is gonna be a post, post method. So the data that I'm passing in is name, is Kevin for employee, uh, salary, $200 and age 86. Thank you, I know I look young for my age. Let's send this. And as you can see, we get a 200 response back and it passed in the data, the record has been added successfully. Now, sometimes APIs won't take form URL encoded content type, and we could specify a different content type or modifying the header in which we're sending the information with the dash capital H command. So this curl command that you see on your screen is very similar to what we did before, with the difference being is the content data type, right, is in JSON. It's no longer that URL form data. So we still have name, Kevin, salary, I got a pay raise of a dollar, and I've, I'm six years older now. Time passes pretty quickly when you're filming. Uh, as you can see, this dash H flag, and it says content type that's going off the screen onto the next line is application JSON, and we're still sending this to the create endpoint. We can send this now to this API, and as you can see, the record has been added successfully, this time using JSON instead of that URL encoding. We're actually gonna take this ID 8729 and we're gonna use it for the next one. And lastly, sometimes you want to change the method in which you're interacting with an API. So we've shown you get requests by default is what curl uses when you specify a URL. And when you pass in data, the default is a post request. But of course, there's other methods that we would want to use sometimes. So let's take a look if we weren't going to specify an individual method and try to do an action that isn't get or post. We're going to curl the delete endpoint. And I already forgot what the ID was. Was it 2729? I don't remember. This API will return the same data. Let's act like that ID was 2729. As you can see, when we run curl against the delete endpoint with this ID, not specifying a method, we're going to get an error. And when we just look at the header information, it gives us a 404, right? Because this individual endpoint doesn't accept the get request against it. So let's clear the screen again. And we're actually going to specify the flag dash capital X and then an HTTP method. In this case, we don't want to send a get, we want to send a delete. If we run that, we get the response success, data 2729 successfully has been deleted. Again, 
You can use dash X specifying specifically if you want to run a put request instead of a post, or in this case, a delete request instead of a get, you know, any other HTTP method that we'd want to use, you can use with the flag dash capital X. That's covering most of how you'd interact with an API. It's important to note here, all the different flags that I'm talking about, you can use in an individual file and you can pass data from an individual file. I'm not going to go into details how to do that. I'm sure you can figure that out on your own, but this is a really good, you know, simplistic replacement for tools like Postman. I can't believe I just said this is a replacement for Postman because like, of course, curl came way before something like Postman, but you have options instead of just using a tool like that when curl is right there and not that hard to use. Next crazy thing I wanted to talk about with curl and that is header and host manipulation. Now this might seem a little complicated. I'll link a much better blog post down in the description below if you're interested in this, but let's say you're developing an application locally, um, like a web app, right? And that web app expects a certain URL or a certain host, but you're developing it locally. So you're not on that host, your local host. You can actually use curl to fake the host header of the site your application is expecting even on localhost. So let's take a look at an example of that. So here we're running curl just like we normally would against 127.0.0.1. So we're running curl against localhost, but we're using the flag dash dash header to specify the header here. And we're using the header as host example.com. So now when curl tries to connect, it's going to use the header example.com. So if the application, for example, is checking for a certain host, it's not going to get localhost or 127.0.0.1. It's going to get example.com. Now you can get a little bit more complicated with commands like this. This command is doing something similar, but slightly different. In this case, let's say we wanted to connect to navic.org, but we wanted to resolve custom navic.org 443 to localhost. This is going to do something similar where it, curl is going to then be its own resolver, in this case, resolve navic.org to localhost. This could be helpful for doing something similar to with the header manipulation, but sometimes an SNI for like SSL, HTTPS type stuff is expecting resolving a certain server name, and that's when resolve can be helpful. Now, the last flag I'll talk about here very briefly is this flag dash dash connect to example.com 443. In this case, we're specifying that we want to connect to an individual host name when we're actually connecting to example.com. This is helpful, let's say, if you're behind a load balancer and you're trying to do specific testing of an individual host, you just want to resolve that host. Okay, moving even farther into the funkiness with curl, we've only been using curl so far with HTTP and HTTPS, and but but curl supports a very wide range of different protocols from LDAP to MQTT for queuing, uh, WebSockets, FTP, which you'd probably expect when dealing with files, uh, to Telnet. So let's look at Telnet. You can run a different protocol with curl. We're just specifying the difference between HTTP and HTTPS by using the protocol initially. So in this case, we want to use Telnet. We just want to test a connection with Telnet to localhost. So we can use localhost. And in this case of port, I know 4317 is open. And if we hit run, we get some information back, but this says we can establish a connection with Telnet. This might be helpful. Sometimes you might have a system that has curl, but doesn't have Telnet to test if like ports are open, for example, a very rudimentary, but I, I tend to Telnet all the time. And sometimes I have to use curl instead. An example is if this couldn't connect, let's use 4318 as a port. If we run that, it's just going to hang and it's going to tell us in a second it can't connect. Another fun protocol here. Now we're just getting into the weird. This one's not practical at all. You can actually use the dict protocol and this will allow you to uh, get dictionary information. So we can use the dict protocol with again, dict colon slash slash and then dict.org for dictionary.org. And in this weird query language, in this case, we're gonna use D for define colon and then what we wanna define. Let's just define dog. We have the definition and all the information about dog. A species of flea, dog flea. Oh, dog flea. Oh, it's all the different things that category of dog is in. I didn't actually look at what dick was in dick. I just knew I could do this. Uh, there's some interesting stuff in here. A mean worth his fellow a wrench. Fun. Okay, the last protocol we're going to talk about, and I tried getting this working. I really did, but this was going to take longer than me setting up this whole video. And that is SMTP or sending an email with curl. Yes. You can send an email with curl. First, you need to specify an email you want to send. I have actually have already populated this in email.txt. Uh, here you can see we have a from line, John Smith, right? John example.com. These are examples to Joe Smith, subject, date, and then 
the actual body of the email, right? You have to specify the email.txt. I got this right from Curl's own example, by the way. I didn't create this. I hope you don't think there's stolen valor or something there. Then you're going to specify a command like this, curl, again, the protocol, smtp, mail.example.com, mail from your email, uh, and then the receiver email, and then you can upload an individual file. In this case, the email.txt to send that email. Now, I just said I wasn't going to run this, but I did want to show this. As, as funky and quirky as that is, there might be some practical uses you might want to send an email with curl. For example, let's say you're in a pretty locked down system. You can send some logs as an attachment, or you can alert with email without pulling in other APIs. Is there better tools to do this? Absolutely, right? Like, I'm not going to pull curl as my first... Uh, as my first email utility, but it's nice to know that's a possibility and maybe it might be some funky solutions in some troubleshooting in the future or a discussion in an interview, for example. Okay, that was talking through different examples with Curl. Of course, there's a ton of different things you can do beyond that. I just scratched the surface in the ways that I've used it and I found it helpful. Like always, look at the man pages. Uh, that's the real information. Feel free to explore this deeper on your own. But that being said, thanks for listening. Uh, good luck curling your files, I guess. Um, have a good day.